Book seven of 2020 was Depression, The Way Out of Your Prison by Dorothy Rowe. So this is the second book by Dorothy Rowe that I have read. Uh, the other one was The Successful Self that I randomly stumbled across in Waterstones um, and then borrowed it from the library because it was too expensive. I would say in comparison, um, The Successful Self is a lot better uh, than this one. Um, I think if I hadn't have read The Successful Self, I would probably think that this one was maybe better, but because I was comparing it to that, I thought that this was kind of lacking in comparison to that other one, but it's still interesting. Uh, Dorothy Roy is a, well, was, I think she's died now, um, an Australian psychologist whose speciality was mental illnesses. She would say that um, mental disturbances are not disorders. They are responses to what happened to us in our childhood and our childhood environment. She kind of says that as children, we didn't have any uh, control over what happened to us and we were kind of powerless. So if there was something that we felt or, or wanted to happen, we were powerless to make that be so. We were kind of at the behest of, of everybody else and what they wanted. And so it's almost like Ro suggests a way of creating uh, them ourselves. So we're creating kind of anxiety, we're cre creating depression and whatever else, uh, because it's kind of like a sane way to cope with our uh, insane environment. So if you're kind of a child where you are in a situation that is not great, it's kind of almost safer to think that you're the problem rather than the environment because you know people are supposed to be taking care of you so if you think that there's something wrong with them then you're in danger because there's no one looking after you so it's, it makes more sense in that kind of way to think that that you're the one with the issue that therefore you need to have this anxiety or this depression or whatever um but essentially because it's a what Roy's saying is because it's a creation of your own it means that you can overcome it because once you recognize what it is and the fact that it's come from childhood you can work on that and address that so she gives a lot of examples which I think are really useful because I think sometimes when you say things to some people they think oh no that sounds ridiculous or whatever but when you've actually got examples it's like oh that that does kind of make sense so that's kind of useful so I'll give you an example um there are people that feel like they're not enough that they're not good enough that there's some kind of deficiency in them and Raw suggests that people have made themselves feel like that because it's better and safer to believe that the people taking care of us are good and that we're not good because if I've kind of already said this actually I think I jumped ahead with myself essentially if if the people taking care of you are, are not good then as I mentioned before like you're not safe like it they, they can't take care of you so it, it makes more sense for you to create this kind of delusion that you're the one with the problem like there's something wrong with you because otherwise like it's not a good situation to be in because remember you're powerless and you can't do anything about it so i'll give you an example um if you were a child and every time you tried to express yourself you experienced hostility from somebody in your family then that might kind of manifest as an adult where when you're in a situation a group of people you feel quite anxious speaking up because you've learned as a child that when you do speak up you get ridiculed or you know you get uh, name called or whatever and so you kind of almost generalize that kind of fear to every kind of social situation that you end up being in now obviously this might not have been in your family environment this might have been in a friendship uh, group where every time you spoke up you got you know taken the mick out of and so therefore you worry about that in in other kind of situations you know there's there's always kind of situations that happen where there'll be somebody that kind of wants to make fun of you or wants to put you down because that makes them feel better you know it's kind of a, a general thing that people do a lot in group situations i don't know if you've kind of recognized that in groups yourself but it happens all the time there's always one or two people in the group that like to put other people down and and you know it kind of bolsters their own self-esteem by like putting putting other people down um it's a shame really that it's kind of a, a feature of of life but you know if you experience that as a child and you don't have the power to do anything about that then you will 
you know, then generalise that to other situations and expect that in other situations as well. And think that that means that there's something wrong with you, that you must be doing something to kind of invite that hostility from somebody else, but in reality you're not. And I think that's what Ro is kind of suggesting. It's very easy to think that you're the one with the problem because you're in an environment that's quite hostile and not very nice. And in reality, you haven't done anything wrong. Like there's nothing that you've done that could possibly have made that situation any different. Um, and it's funny actually, because I've been watching Normal People by Sally Rooney um, on BBC. They've done kind of like an adaptation of the book. And there's a character in that called Marianne. And she has a very kind of dysfunctional, hostile family environment. But she's grown up being made to feel like she's the one that's got the problem and that she's like there's something wrong with her. And, you know, she goes through life not feeling enough, kind of dating people that, that treat her badly and, and that, you know, she's much better than. But she kind of just puts up with it because she doesn't feel like, like she's worthy. Um, and then obviously a relationship with somebody makes her makes her realise her worth a little bit more um, but it's because of that situation where she's in a hostile family environment you know in, in her situation she's got a brother that's really horrible to her on a regular basis and the mother just sits there and doesn't do anything about it and doesn't protect her from that so you know if you're in a situation where someone's always hostile to you no matter what you do um, and you know the, the person that's supposed to protect you isn't protecting you like it creates that kind of feeling of you know is it me is there something wrong with me um and then you kind of carry that through in life and it, it creates things like depression um and so you know as an adult you kind of need to recognize that you're not the one with the problem like it's the environment it's the hostility that's created that within you and to kind of you know feel more worthy uh, in yourself um similarly like you know if you were a child and every time you you cried or you got upset or you got angry or you kind of showed some kind of emotion if you were kind of told like that that was weakness or that you shouldn't express yourself like that or if you were told like loads of you know it could be like an offhand comment that somebody says but as a child you, you take it on board and you remember it um you end up as an adult repressing your feelings and, and not expressing yourself because you know, you'll end up becoming passive aggressive and things like that because in that childhood situation you weren't given the ability to be open about your feelings and to recognize your feelings you know anyone that's quite cut off from their feelings is because in childhood you weren't given the, the space to recognize your emotional needs you know you weren't you know for example not talking to a child and asking them how they feel and asking them how that situation made them feel like you know as a child i can't ever remember anyone speaking to me and asking me how I felt about situations and that did lead to me being quite emotionally repressed for for a lot of my 20s um, I'm a lot better now but it took a lot of work on me personally to get to that that place where I was able to recognize how I felt about things because I'd never been given that space in childhood to to express myself and and to know how I was feeling you know in childhood it can be quite quite trivial banal things that happen um you know for example I rem i've got kind of memories where i remember an auntie coming round um and i wanted to play with her in my bedroom uh you know play with my toys or whatever which i can imagine like if like for her that would have been so boring and like why would you want to go and play in a child's room and she kind of like kept putting me off in a minute in a minute in a minute kind of thing and she never actually came into my room and played with my toys and that really scarred me for a long time and it's such a ridiculous trivial thing but it made me feel like oh she doesn't want to play with me um and and i kind of generalized that to other situations and and uh and that was kind of an issue uh, for a long time and so it's just like really banal things that, that have happened you know what i've mentioned before about nobody actually asking me about kind of like how i felt and stuff i was quite a quiet child and so and parents are busy like do they have time to really kind of like parent in that way I don't I don't know if they kind of do so it could be like really small things that happen that that have an impact on somebody and then you don't even realize that they've had an impact on you until in your adulthood you start to have like particularly in your like 
late 20s early 30s you start to realize that you're really dysfunctional in certain areas and that there's there's things that you're doing that don't make sense or that you're repeating similar things like i don't know you're like having the same issues with friends and things like that or relationships or or i don't know career things or whatever it is that you know you end up going in kind of cycles for a little bit and then you kind of realize oh i should really kind of do something about this i should really kind of work on this trait if, of mine that's that's preventing me from doing things that's that's a barrier to things you know we all kind of recognize as we get older that we're doing things to sabotage ourselves on a regular basis and that actually we need to kind of work on those to to become like better people um and so you know rose kind of suggested that there's a lot of things that happen to us in childhood that we you know they might have even been just usual things that we've misinterpreted because obviously as children we didn't have the cognitive ability to understand the reality of situations and to understand that that you know if a, if a parent taught to us in a bad way that it was because we were being naughty or it was because they were stressed or whatever it is like there's obviously lots of things that we misinterpret when we're younger that we do when we're older as well but that has you know carried through to our to our adult life we've overgeneralized it without realizing that that's what we've actually done you know as an adult you're in control of your yourself and your decisions and you're not at the mercy of other people's behavior like you know if somebody's in your environment who's not being very nice to you who's being hostile to you like you have the choice of whether you continue to surround yourself with that person or whether you address that they're being hostile or you kind of you know you have a way of dealing with things and you don't have to kind of stand for it like you can do something about it um which you couldn't do as a child it's like you know you can kind of change that that behavior um Ro also talks about perfectionism and how perfectionism happens because as a child you were highly criticized and i recognize this because i was a perfectionist for a long time and i was heavily criticized as a child like literally from both of my parents i couldn't do anything right like i was constantly told you're not doing this right you're not doing that right you could do this you should do that like even as an adult i still get heavily criticized um to the point where i'm just like what what is the point like of even like i think that to criticize somebody incessantly and to put them down incessantly is a really kind of hostile thing to do a really negative thing to do to be constantly kind of making somebody feel that that they're not doing it the right way when there isn't a right way so I just find that a really odd thing to do so as an adult you kind of realize there isn't a right way of doing things like i can do anything i want in any way that i want and just because somebody else is telling me that that, that isn't the right way and that i should be doing it some other way like sodom like who cares like do things however you want to do them like and forget that people are, are being like that because that's their anxiety that they're trying to put on to you so you know you have a choice of whether you you respond to that or not i tend to just ignore it and just like pretend that that it's not being said because <laughs> not my problem really is it that, that that that's kind of going on um so overall the book's really interesting it's you know really kind of opens your eyes as to as to what depression is and where it comes from and why people kind of end up having it uh, because it's always a response to how you've been treated and your environment but it might not be like that you've intentionally um been treated badly or that you've intentionally had to deal with hostility it's more kind of as a child you've interpreted it in that way so it, you know it's probably your own faults like you, you've you've interpreted things in in a way that you have and then you're kind of over applying them to over generalizing them to kind of adult situations that you don't need to do so it's about kind of like looking at what are you actually doing and dismantle that and recognize that you people can't have an impact on you unless you let them have an impact on you like as a child you didn't realize that you didn't understand that but as an adult people can't affect you unless you let them affect you so it's about recognizing that that you are not at the mercy of other people's weird behavior and hostile behavior and unconscious behavior likely you know a lot of people are critical or hostile without even realizing that they're doing it so it's kind of like you know it that's their problem so depression is something that you can find your way out of when you when you regain your kind of understanding of your worth and your identity and 
you recognise that other people are being kind of strange and weird and that you don't need to kind of be a part of that. So it is worth reading, particularly if you do suffer from depression, because it's kind of like, it does help. Um, but the successful self was a lot better.